Putting oils into the fridge tends to give them a strange, cloudy consistency. This is most common with olive and coconut oils, which solidify at cooler temperatures. Keeping olive oil in the fridge is a big no-no in the food world. Refrigerators are damp, humid, and filled with condensation, not what this oil needs. This can completely ruin its flavor and texture. The consistency of coconut oil depends on the climate and it will turn solid in cold temperatures. Keeping it in a cool, dark place like the pantry will prolong its life and you won't have to dig it out of the jar. If you currently have one of these oils in the fridge and it's changing to a solid, don't fret. Just take it out and it should go back to normal at room temperature. It's best to keep nut and seed oils in the refrigerator though. They're much more likely to oxidize and go bad quickly. Shockingly, in most cases, butter can actually be left out of the fridge. Try it, and you'll see that it's also much easier to spread. This isn't true for everyone, though. If you live in a hot climate, you might have to keep it in the fridge. If it isn't too hot, remember to always keep your butter covered and in a cool area away from direct sunlight. A cupboard should work just fine. You might have noticed that cold tomatoes are often dull and flavorless. Chilling tomatoes limits their ability to generate that beautiful aroma and taste. They're best kept at room temperature, like on the kitchen counter, where they'll also keep their flavor. If you wanted to slow down the ripening of your tomatoes, you could put them in the fridge though. If you're too late and they begin to get too ripe, it's time to make grandma's secret roasted tomato sauce. Speaking of tomatoes, ketchup's natural acidity makes it almost impossible for nasty microorganisms to get in and spoil it. Keeping it out at room temperature will improve the flavor too, so avoid refrigerating it too much. If you buy a whole melon, there's no need to keep it in the fridge. Not only will the melons retain more nutrients, but they're also much tastier. Melons are sweetest and juiciest when kept at room temperature. That goes for all melons too. Watermelons will lose their flavor and beautiful red color if they're kept in the fridge. Once you cut the melon open, you need to refrigerate it. Wrap it in cling wrap and store the remaining pieces in the fridge for a few days. Herbs like coriander and mint are best kept in the crisper, wrapped loosely in something absorbent. This is important because it stops them from absorbing fridge smells. Placing them in an airtight container would work too. Some herbs are different though. Basil and parsley will turn a horrible color if you keep them in the fridge. They do better when left out because the dry air in the refrigerator causes the leaves to wilt. If you want to store basil and parsley, cut the bottom off the stems and place them in a jar with a small amount of water. Trimming the stems and changing the water will increase the longevity. Uncut onions keep best when stored in a dark, dry area. The humidity of the refrigerator just makes them moldy and mushy. Avoid direct sunlight, and once they're cut open, place them in a resealable bag in the vegetable drawer. Keep them in a well-ventilated area, away from foods that could be ruined by their smell. Make sure to keep an eye on them, though. If you leave them too long, they could sprout. Buying cucumbers and sticking them in the veggie crisper just seems like the normal thing to do. So it might shock you to learn that they taste best when stored at room temperature. Too low a temperature will cause damage to the cucumber. So, just keep cucumbers in your pantry and away from apples and bananas to give them a longer life and maintain that delicious crispy taste longer. Peanut butter doesn't need to be put in the refrigerator anymore. This gooey spread can be kept in the pantry for three months or so after opening, keeping its famous stickiness ready to scoop out and devoured. You can also keep it in the fridge if you want to, to extend its shelf life and avoid oil separation, but this will harden it and make it a bit more difficult to spread. Honey can crystallize and solidify in cold temperatures. To keep your honey easy to use, keep it at room temperature, so it stays perfectly gooey. Simply keep it in a cool location away from direct sunlight and in a sealed container. Keeping the honey in the original container is best because they'll have the ideal seal to keep it fresher for longer and keep hungry ants away. There's no need to stash hot sauces in the fridge. There's plenty of vinegar and salt to prevent them from going bad. Plus, the heat of the peppers is more potent at room temperature. That's the reason you bought it after all. Some hot sauces will even solidify if you leave them in the refrigerator, so be careful. The creamy goodness of the avocado is at its best when kept out of the fridge. Keeping them in the cold stops the ripening. Just store the fruit on the counter at room temperature. If you want to ripen avocados quicker, place them in a brown paper bag along with a banana for a few days. The banana releases a gas that causes the avocado to ripen more quickly, and you'll be having guacamole in no time. Ground or whole bean coffee shouldn't be kept in the fridge, even if it's in an airtight container. 
Coffee works as a deodorizer and absorbs moisture, odors, and flavors from the air around it, making your morning cup of joe taste less like the nectar of the gods and more like last night's leftovers. Keep your coffee in a dark space like your pantry, away from sunlight, heat, and moisture. If you like to freeze your coffee, make sure you use a truly airtight container and only in small batches. You need to make sure they're completely sealed away from moisture so they aren't ruined before you get a chance to defrost them. Full bulbs of garlic should be stored in a cool, dry place, like your pantry. A sealed container isn't a good idea either. Without ventilation, they'll quickly grow mold. Storing your garlic correctly will make sure it stays good for months. Everyone has their own morning rituals to cheer the body up after sleep. Apart from exercising and hot showers, the first food that you put into your hungry tummy can define the rest of the day. That's why it's good to know which foods are just not meant to be eaten on an empty stomach. Well, at least we have bananas. This fruit is a great choice for a lazy breakfast, right? Wrong! No matter how fresh and healthy it is, raw bananas can bring chaos to your stomach if you eat them at the wrong time. This fruit is rich in magnesium, which may lead to digestive issues. Also, in some cases, it can cause blood pressure fluctuations. But if you're still a dedicated banana eater, try mixing it with oatmeal. It creates a lining in the stomach that prevents irritation caused by the naturally produced hydrochloric acid. Bananas go well with other healthy foods like porridge, peanut butter, dried fruits, or nuts for eating early in the morning. What could be better than a fresh, crispy croissant for breakfast? Many things, actually. Cakes, pastries, pizza, and other bakeries usually contain yeast, which can harm the stomach lining if eaten on an empty stomach. Also, bakery products may cause flatulence, so it's not the best food you want to eat first thing in the morning. But you can replace the regular white yeast bakery with sourdough whole grain bread. In fact, it's one of the best food choices right after waking up. This bread is rich in carbohydrates that are very important for a balanced diet and keeping your gut bacteria happy. A glass of fresh citrus juice looks very Instagram friendly when standing on a fancy breakfast tray. But unfortunately, things don't look so glamorous inside your stomach. Fruit smoothies and juices are too rich in fructose, which may shock and overburden your sleepy pancreas and liver. Although they are great any time of the day, in the morning, citrus fruits should be consumed after eating something else. Otherwise, they may cause great harm to the body. The high content of fructose and fiber can make your metabolism work lazier during the day. And also, experts mm. don't recommend eating more than two oranges per day to avoid hurricanes in your tummy. If you can't imagine your morning without fruits, go for papaya or watermelon. They can help flush toxins out of your body and make you feel lighter during the day. Fresh salads are very good in most cases, but still, experts advised against eating raw vegetables on an empty stomach. After a long hour fasting, your tummy may find it too hard to digest the coarse fibers. So if you don't want to experience pain and discomfort, keep your salad for later hours. Let's talk about the hot water in the morning trend. You've probably seen a bulk of its variations. Bloggers suggest mixing the water with all sorts of things, from lemon juice and chia seeds to baking soda. Of course, each of these magic potions requires separate research and scientific approval. But most experts agree that one glass of pure lukewarm water in the morning is a great tool to inspire your bowel movement and prepare it for the day. On the other hand, it's not advised to drink cold beverages if your stomach is empty because they can damage the mucous membrane. This can make your digestive system work lazier or in some cases cause discomfort and an upset stomach. When it comes to your morning coffee, the rule is simple. If you want to stay healthy, never drink coffee on an empty stomach. When you do so, it stimulates the secretion of hydrochloric acid, which is harmful to your digestive system. Not only can it provoke gastritis from time to time, but also develop many health issues in the long term. Also, coffee boosts the level of cortisol, the hormone which controls our biological clock. It happens very quickly, and the body needs to make an extra effort to balance the things back to a normal state. That's why experts recommend drinking coffee an hour after waking up, but you should eat something beforehand. 
even a tiny slice of bread will be fine. If you like eating yogurt with granola or any other fermented milk products for breakfast, make sure to eat something safe before them. Ideally, you have to wait about an hour. Otherwise, dairy products can damage the good bacteria in your stomach and cause the effect opposite to what they're actually made for. But this recommendation doesn't apply to cheeses. If you want your digestive system to thank you, go for feta or cottage cheese. These good fats are just perfect for the morning. Goat cheese is also a nice idea. It's softer and tangier than most cow cheeses. And it also tends to be slightly higher in fat and minerals and lower in lactose. Many people eat chocolate or protein bars for breakfast. But in fact, processed sugar is the champion among the worst breakfast choices. Any high sugar food and drink should be avoided just after waking up in the morning. But don't rush off to cut off the chocolate completely. It can help chase away the morning gloom and improve your mood during the day. Chocolate can promote positive feelings because it stimulates the production of hormones responsible for our good mood. That's why a reasonable amount of high-quality chocolate after breakfast can be beneficial for your well-being and help you switch to work mode. Keep in mind that darker chocolate contains more caffeine, while white chocolate has none. So, if you want to stay alert, go for 70% dark chocolate. Not only does it help you stay wakeful, but it's also a treasury of useful components like calcium, copper, potassium, antioxidants, and magnesium. Chili with jalapenos might taste delicious, but it's not the best choice for breakfast. Here's why. When you eat spicy food on an empty stomach, it irritates your vulnerable lining and makes your belly very unhappy. Today, we're going to reveal some fast food secrets. By now, we've all learned that we never get the exact same food that we see in ads. But uh, there is way more stuff to know about how fast food companies make us buy stuff. It's like they make your brain order, Ooh, I've seen something delicious. Get that for me ASAP. Ooh. Well, imagine entering a food court and smelling all that beautiful food. As you walk by, one smell stands out from the others. Fresh baked Cinnabon. Yeah, they do bake them. But the smell that reaches your nose doesn't come straight from the oven. Cinnabon bakery chains place their ovens near their front door to attract customers. That smell isn't just coming from the oven, though. The staff heats baking sheets with sprinkled cinnamon and brown sugar to keep the sweet aroma in the air all day long. These smells make you feel hungry, even though your stomach isn't empty. Let me introduce you to aroma marketing. The aim here is to make products irresistible. Did you notice the unique scent of crispy fries from McDonald's? It's the same smell in all stores worldwide. This is a pre-planned strategy. You smell these aromas and your body increases ghrelin production. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone, by the way. Your stomach produces it. So yeah, these smells can stimulate your appetite. Another strategy to lure customers is to use the power of colors. They also trigger your appetite. Think about the most famous fast food restaurant logos and the colors used inside and in their branding. Slogans, mascots, or meals can change, but nearly all well-known fast food chains go with a similar color palette. There's no coincidence. Research proves that these warm colors activate your hunger. Also, they grab your attention. Think about it as a traffic light or a stop sign. You kind of want to stop. Now, in the past, people burned many calories to find food. Are you going to hunt some animals and gather some herbs? No. You just need to walk into a cafe around the corner to get your food in 5 minutes. Since this food is not expensive and is served fast, your brain's reward system favors it. Convenience is also addictive, like sugar. Brands are aware of this, and this leads us to the next fact. Businesses know how our brains work and manipulate them. If you're asked if you want to have a larger size of fries or drink, it's likely you'll say yes. Every brand earns millions of dollars just by upsizing the menus, for instance. Upsizing costs less, but oops, you've actually just spent more than you intended. The pricing format and dollar menu are also a part of this trick. You see numbers advertised as only $5.89. It's almost 6, but your brain associates it with the number 5 
because you see 5 written there, not 6. Plus, the currency signs are sometimes small and hard to read. You go for a a la carte option, but they're placed on the sides and extra value meals flash out. When you look at the prices, a place in your brain called the orbitofrontal cortex takes control. Research shows that when a person buys something, knowing there's a better deal among the options, the brain activity shows signs of pain. There's a good offer, but if you take it, you end up eating more. Maybe you only want to buy a burger and you end up with fries and a drink. On the other hand, it's good if that was your intention all along. I can't argue with that. Do you know that your burgers are wrapped in grease-repelling paper? This means that this paper might contain harmful chemicals. Researchers tested samples taken from 400 containers and wrappers from fast food chains. They discovered that 38% of sandwich and burger wrappers contain fluorine, a rather toxic substance. And it's not just sandwich and burger wrappers. They found that 56% of dessert and bread wrappers and 20% of french fry sleeves contain fluorine. So, sadly, not just fast food, but also its packaging can be harmful. Now here's another trick. When you're on your way to get a snack from the drive-thru, the machines will recognize your license plate, and based on your previous purchases, they will flash similar options in front of you. Another thing about drive throughs is that they place cameras there. Sometimes you just talk through the buzzer. You can't see the staff, but beware, they can see you in some chains. Those use devices like magnetic sensors to notice vehicles. Then, employees get notified via their headsets. They press a special button to activate their mics. Without sensors, cameras, and windows, how could they see you coming? They aren't psychic. Don't worry much, though. Employees probably don't care what you do. I mean, they have a million other things to do instead. Now, let's assume you get a burger from the drive-thru. You have grilled meat in it. Wait a minute, is it really grilled? Shocking news, they add a solution, sort of a sauce with a grilled flavor to the meat, and make those fake grill lines on it. They can't grill meat at such short notice, but people like this look, so they go with this option. Speaking of faking it, fast food is very processed. I mean, the flavor in the burgers and nuggets is often gone in the process level of processed. To compensate for this, companies add special chemicals to give the food taste and aroma. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious, and it makes sense. But what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon-looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen-permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini-experiment in your kitchen. 
Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all, but if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.